pump setup and operation. There are three GoFlow system components, the pump, sterile tube sets, and an optional wireless remote. The GoFlow pump's control panel features the power on, off button, and an LED light that illuminates when the pump is on. A stop start key with an LED light that illuminates when the pump is operating. A pressure display. If there is a malfunction, an error code will appear here. Increase and decrease pressure keys. A wash function key. And two indicator lights, one for service and the other for overpressure, which will light up if either of these conditions are present. The tube set retainer, roller wheel, and pressure sensor are on the right side of the pump. The rear panel contains a power cord socket and fuse holder. Tripod mount and hand wheel to secure the pump to an IV pole and an RS-232 port that is used by the service department as needed. An optional wireless remote controls pump start and stop, pressure increase and decrease, and wash start and stop. The tube set includes two spikes and clamps at the end distal to the pump and a lure lock at the end proximal to the pump that connects to the inflow cannula. The flexible roller tube connects around the roller wheel. The pressure chamber has an RFID chip to assure that only Smith & Nephew single-use tube sets are used with the pump. Place the pump on an IV pole or cart. The pump should be 80 to 120 centimeters or 32 to 48 inches above the floor depending on the height of the joint being treated. Refer to the setup guide to identify the correct mounting placement. Next, deploy the tube set into the sterile field. The scrub tech hands the two spiked ends to the circulator and connects the proximal end to the inflow cannula. The pump must be powered on before installing the tube set the pump will then undergo a self-test and default to its factory setting of 50 millimeters of mercury. Next, insert the pressure chamber into the tube retainer. This will only connect in one direction. Place the roller tube around the roller wheel, taking care not to damage the pressure chamber membranes. Prepare fluid bags per facility protocol. The pump's instrument recognition feature optimizes flow performance based on the cannula and scope being used. This simple priming step should be completed outside of the joint prior to the procedure. To properly calibrate the pump, first ensure that the arthroscope is securely connected to the cannula. Make sure that the inflow valve is open completely and the outflow valve, if used, is closed. Press the start-stop key to initiate fluid flow its LED will illuminate as green. The pump automatically completes the instrument detection process over a brief period of time. During this period, the cannula completes three short irrigation cycles. The calibration is complete when the pump beeps and a steady stream of fluid is observed. Keep the tubing connected to the cannula. Stop fluid flow by closing the inflow valve. Next, insert the cannula into the joint. Insert the scope and reopen the flow valve and begin the procedure. Do not press the start-stop key. If the surgeon finds the connected tubing to be obtrusive during insertion of the cannula into the joint, clamp and temporarily disconnect the tubing to stop irrigation. Then reattach the tubing after cannula insertion. The GoFlow pump automatically maintains pressure by adjusting fluid flow up to a maximum rate of 1.5 liters per minute. Pressure may also be adjusted as needed while the pump is in use. The wash function increases the set pressure by 50% up to a maximum of 150 millimeters of mercury. It will default to the set pressure after 20 seconds or earlier by depressing the wash button. At the end of the procedure, press the start stop key to stop the pump. Dispose of the tubing accordingly to hospital protocol. Thanks for learning about this simple and effective product. Please contact technical support with questions or for additional information.